but recently joined an all-star cast of percussionists from around the world on stage in San Francisco. In fact, part of Mickey Hart's passion is the drum beat of the world. It's that very beat that's led him into schools and senior centers around the country. The reason? Music is therapy. In fact, we're going to beat it for a minute or so, but when we return, the healing sound as Sunday Today continues. It's the pulse. It's the heartbeat. It's the blood flowing through the veins of the earth. Uh, two coffees and a uh, sweet and low. <laughs> and now what? They want a coffee. Well, a couple of weeks ago, he won a Grammy in the World Beat category. Last year, authored A History of the Drum. We know what happens when Mickey Hart of the Grateful Dead gets on stage with the band. But what would happen if you took Mickey, a bunch of drums, and put them together with some senior citizens? The results are amazing. Would you like a drum? Here's a mallet for you. These are just frame drums. You can have fun today. Like this. All we need is a drum, a circle, and somebody to say it's okay to make noise together, you know, share a rhythm. Rhythm is just the basis of life. When you have rhythm and you play and you make a rhythm of your own, you come alive. Here's the old folks forgetting their pains and their aches and their troubles and moving into the altered states, you know. Certainly there was rapture in the circle. You can see what happened. They released their, all their adrenaline and their inhibitions, and they created something from nothing, you know, and they weren't on the TV set, and they weren't feeling sorry for themselves, and the blood was running. This is what it's all about, joy, you know, that's what music is about. This is what my whole life has led up to, you know, this is a gift that's been given me, and I'm just passing it on to them. Yourself. Give yourself a big hand. Wow. Joining us now is uh, the new Sunday Today musical correspondent, Vicki <laughs> yeah. Hart, and also joining us, Director of Music Thera Therapy at Arizona State, Barbara Crow. Uh, welcome to Sunday Today. First of all, Mickey, what, what was happening there? What was that that we were seeing? Well, they, these people were getting together and making a rhythm of their own, and they were being energized, and they were focusing their uh, attention on the uh, sound of a drum, an ancient technique which uh, seems to have a certain innocent kind of uh, uh, revival now here in the late part of the 20th century. And it's being discovered as a, uh, a healing uh, tool, a focusing technique that uh, allows uh, for the feeling of well-being and the reducing of stress and so forth. It's, uh, it's interesting to see how the drum has come full circle. You know, 40,000 years later, it's still a viable uh, commodity. Barbara, in the, in the music therapy department at Arizona State, what, what have you found? I mean, where has this come from? We hear about it in, in ancient lore, about drums being healing, music being healing. Why has it taken so long for it to be recognized again? I think there's a couple reasons for that. I think that, one, it isn't easy to measure the responses to music because music is so complicated. It's rhythm, it's melody, it's tone, it's harmonies. And we're also just now medically being able to measure those things that how the way in which music affects it. We're, not, we're just now able to do brain scans and PET scans and read vibrational characteristics of muscles and joints. And in fact, a lot of that technology is just now or is about to be invented, literally. We can't yet measure exactly what's happening in all, all, in all aspects, but we're going to be able to. So really, technology is just now catching up with the knowledge that's been in existence for 40,000 plus years. Well, what's the impetus? What, what, was, what was the catalyst to start this off, to get people saying, hey, this is, this is something viable? Rhythm for Life? Yeah. Um, well, music therapy as a profession has been around since 1950. And with Mickey's work over the last 10 years and really looking at specifically the rhythm, the drum, the percussion, uh, it, it came together that the field of music therapy and the Senate hearing that we had this summer on music and aging and all the work he's done in terms of looking specifically at percussion comes together. So we're now going to look specifically at percussion and drumming as one aspect of this sound music 
therapy intervention that's possible out there. Mickey, how did this? How did you get into this? How did all of a sudden? I mean, Mickey Hart drummer all of a sudden become Mickey Hart music therapist? Well, uh, I mean, I do this professionally. I mean, this is what I do for a living. This is my day job. I mean, <laughs> and we do it to many people, thousands of people. So I noticed uh, the effect of uh, music and rhythm on thousands of people. Being in the Grateful Dead, and uh, in my research on the subject, I found out that we're not the only ones that have been doing it. Uh, other people have been doing it for thousands of years, so I researched many cultures and, find, and found out that this is something that happens worldwide, uh, prehistory. So that's how I got into it, you know, starting to research the ethnography of uh, the drum. Where did it come from and how, it is, how, is, how has it been used mm -hmm. over the years? Besides me doing it professionally, I learned that there are... Uh, that the original uses for the drum was a focusing technique and it was a, a trance tool. Now, okay, let's say you go into a school or a senior center. What do you do? What do you do with the you drum? You give them a drum mm -hmm. and you let them make a rhythm of their own. You say, this is a very simple instrument, very elegant, and uh, you don't need to be a musician, uh, almost uh, a noisician, if you would. <laughs> you know, this is not music per se. This is more just beating together and making a simple rhythm of your own and filling your cavity with this sound. And when a lot of people do it, they form a new community. They create something from nothing that is, is specifically theirs. These are very simple instruments. You don't need to spend um, four years learning how to play them. You just <laughs> sit there and you, you, you feel what's going on. You play, you sing your song, you dance your dancers, and you energize yourself. And that's what the drum really is all about, is energy. Now, what we see, you know, when, when we see, like, for example, in that senior center, everybody seemed to start out together, and then there was improvisation. Is that what you find? Well, everybody's making a rhythm of their own. Mm -hmm. The best way to understand about rhythm is making one of your own. And we live in a rhythm universe, and this is the way we as humans are co we're coded to scan for rhythm this is one of the things that we all share the commonality of it of it is that we don't share the same melodies we don't share the same harmonies we don't share the same language but one thing that we do share as a people is, is rhythm Alrighty. all well, people share rhythm mickey hart grateful dead barbara crow from the music theory department at arizona state thank you very much eric and mary alice eric don't you feel it now i feel it all the way across here oh, yeah, thanks yeah. a lot the vibrations yeah. are felt Next, we're going to turn to a different kind of rhythm, different kind of artistry. We'll meet David Hockney. From paintings to theater sets to computer art even, he puts color into life. On the car for a week, yeah. Thank right you. Now. Thanks, Roberto. Right on. Finally this hour, big doings going on tonight at the Nassau Coliseum. Mm-hmm. Deadheads travel thousands of miles to see Jerry Garcia and his legendary rock and roll band Jam. Talking about the Grateful Dead, News 12's Robin Frank is there. Robin? Bill and Melba, the Coliseum is anything but dead tonight. Tickets for the concerts reportedly sold out in less than 20 minutes. Now fans are here from all over the country. Twenty-seven years after their first concert, the Grateful Dead are still going strong. When they come to town, so do their fans. I've been listening to them for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. yeah, my first show was 1978, and uh, I've seen 48 since then. Where are you from? Savannah, Georgia. From Savannah to San Francisco, by early afternoon, dead fans were lining up outside the Coliseum. Bella Chowdhury and Jack Straw came all the way from California. For them, the music is a mystical experience. Well, for us, it really just opens our hearts and just, I don't know, it's... Just the words and the music is really beautiful and clear. Hardcore deadheads go where the group goes, touring the country. No other care. band in America has such a following. Dan Healy has been doing audio for the dead for 25 years. Does the group have a message? I don't think that we feel that there's any big message that we have to be making. Uh, I think the point of it is music without a message, really. I think, I think it's okay for everyone to make their own message. We draw their own conclusions. We try not to make, we try not to make it too specific. I think the main objective is that everyone should be able to draw their own conclusions. And the Grateful Dead will be 